Welcome everybody to our first tutorial video. My name is Wook and this is Commander Cran behind me here. Hello. So uh, this is our creative world. We started up, uh, threw a bunch of random stuff all over the place, get started, made some miscraft ages, and uh, got a world set up here for us to get some stuff done. We are on Feed the Beast Ultimate 1.0.1. Uh, going to be starting with Industrial Craft 2 today. And uh, many more mods in store for you in the future. Stay tuned. Uh, but I think we'll go through and uh, start the tutorial. Welcome to the tutorial side of the Miscraft portal. We've got some uh, more random stuff set up here and there. Some uh, cheaty quantum generators. But uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. I think what we'll start out with here is going to be the uh, build the 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 useful side of industrial craft too. I really like these things. They're called scaffolds, and uh, they go in. They work in tandem with uh, what you call it. They work in tandem with construction foam, which is this. This is the uh, hardened construction foam after it's all done. But uh, these are also really cool. They work like ladders. You can climb up them, you can uh, place blocks on top of them, and if you want to build them higher, you just left click one. Uh, and you can build out from them a little bit if you place them to the side, but there is a limit. The wooden ones, I believe, you can only go two or three over. Because it's scaffolding, it's not, you know, cheaty blocks. And then the iron ones go up to about five over. Uh, so. It's a really cheap collapsible ladder um, for getting up mountainsides before you have a jetpack or anything like that. And to get them all back down, you just break the bottom one. It goes a little faster with an axe, I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> it goes faster if you're not holding the item that stacks with it. There you go. And they all just break and they all fall right back down. Really easy. Um, the iron one probably takes, yeah, a little bit longer to break, but same idea just let you branch out a little further I believe five oh maybe six I guess six including the base but yeah uh, that's that oh I'm <laughs> just building it up again grab this power tool boom and they all fall back down so the cool part about it is let me see do we have construction foam sprayer somewhere Alright, and uh, one thing that you can do with the construction foam and the scaffolds is it's very easy to build with. So say you want to make a wall, but you want to do like crenellations or something. and uh, Or you want to build your whole house out of this stuff and you can do, you know, it's really easy to set these up. And then you can just spray them with the sprayer and it'll actually take place of the scaffold and it won't end up making any extra. So you can make the shapes you want without having to sculpt it afterwards. Oh, and if you get in there, they suffocate you pretty quick, like quicksand. Yep. But, I mean, it's still really malleable, whatever, but uh, it's a very easy way to get some shapes out of it very quickly. Um, you can build your house that quick, wall at a time. And, uh, I mean, that's that's it. And then you just fill it up, and it, that'll be a wall. So a person could build their house very quickly with this stuff. Uh, definitely worth looking into if you're building a new house. Scaffolding is really cheap. The uh, the construction foam, you know, has a very, nice texture. You can paint it whatever color you want. Yep, definitely. And then the scaffolds just sticks and uh, planks. So really cool stuff. Really easy to fix mistakes. And uh, on to the next stuff. All right, so we've got our construction foam sprayer here, and uh, if you want to use the backpack, it holds a lot more. And then there's the CF pellets, which is made from this little pattern here. I won't be showing a lot of patterns. Feed the beast. The NEI is amazing. So def on default, this uh, sprayer makes just kind of a random pile of stuff. If you're at an angle, it kind of goes like that, or if you go like this, it goes in a straight line, but then it ca it's kind of random behind. Really quick to break down. But once it does dry and harden, it turns into that. You can speed it up with sand, I believe, uh, just by placing it in there. Uh, yep, just right-click with sand. And then you have this solid block. That's It breaks into nothing, but it's a pretty good construction block, and it does take a little bit to break it um, if you don't have a cheaty tool like I do. And then also, alternatively, you can paint these things. 
Uh, there's an industrial craft painter used for wires and things like that, but you can paint these pretty much any color. And uh, yep, see here's all these little painters, and these are really cheap too. The uh, recipe for the painters: two iron and three wool. And I don't think that when they run out of durability, they break. I think they just turn back into an undyed one. So then you just mix them with whatever color you want. Uh, you just put the dye in with there, and boom. So uh, that's pretty cool. And then let me just throw this armor back on. Or not. I'll fly. So I just kind of placed that wall, and you can see it's kind of jagged behind. It's weird like that. But uh, you can fill stuff in and whatnot, and it, it'll all just harden on its own eventually. It's really cool stuff. Uh, it can make some really cool builds because uh, there isn't any other blocks with this type of a face on it that you can be any color. Um, and then to recharge it, of course, you just have to go and uh, we end up using a canning machine, which I'll show you a little bit later, to uh, put stuff in. Otherwise, you can just craft uh, with the CF sprayer and the CF pellets right in there, like that. And uh, another thing we'll show you now. So next we're going to be talking about the Industrial Craft 2 rubber trees. You can see over there the uh, saplings look like this, 626. Six, and they end up giving you uh, resin for rubber. And uh, you can get that by using a tree tap on these orange little dots. You just pop it off and resin comes off. And you can kind of see where it is on the tree. If you click it again, sometimes it'll break the resin thing. So you only want to click it once. Otherwise, you'll end up ruining that log. Uh, may only work with the electric tea ta tree tap or something, but you just click it once and resin pops out, and uh, really easy. Um, once you do get your hands on a portal gun, you can do some pretty cool changes with these to make a very efficient rubber farm. The uh, I don't know a way to rotate the blocks, but uh, where's one with some rubber resin? Right here. All right, so this is just a gravity gun. The same thing can be done with a portal gun. You just move the block, and while you're moving the block, it doesn't show that it has the resin, but once you do place it, the resin is indeed still on the same side, and you can make a whole wall of these things, and then you just go pop, 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 all at once, and uh, I mean, you can basically just make a house out of it, and then uh, you know you just use the four different sides. You use, you end up getting about the same amount. So then you'll end up having a house, and you just pop, pop, get all the resin you want very quickly, and it will regenerate as long as you don't double tap it. Um, so that's that's the rubber trees. Uh, you can cook the resin in a furnace to get the rubber straight out one to one. Otherwise, an extractor will get you three to one, and if you have Greg Tech enabled. That'll get you some more and some extra stuff and some plant balls and things like that. Plant balls are used for biomass. Uh, there's portal gun, which is one of my favorites. But uh, rubber is really important for pretty much all of industrial craft. You end up using it in almost every pattern. Uh, you need a lot of it, and uh, something to start right away is a rubber tree farm. Um, another thing that isn't actually part of industrial craft, but it does use EU, which is the industrial craft energy is these charge pads. If you has the, if they have the mod charge pads, it literally is just a charge pad. This is about the size of a bat box, an MFE, and an MFSU. You just stand on it and it charges your stuff. It's a pretty much a universal charger. It'll charge um, all of the industrial craft tools, armors, and Jet even packs. tools from, as you can see, my power level on the top left is rising from my power tool. Uh, yeah, jetpacks, everything like that. It charges almost everything. And uh, doesn't need a lot of power, really. With this 10 million EU in here, I could unplug this and charge up my armor hundreds of times. Especially, there's also slots for upgrades. And the smaller one, there's only one, but and then there's two, then three. Um, there's other ways that you can do to uh, drain energy from things like that for some PvP. If you're really interested in that, check out the mod on the wiki. Um, I like the efficiency upgrades. I don't even know if they really work with this many in there, but the overclockers too. It seems to go a little faster and it doesn't really hurt the efficiency of the charge very much because it doesn't use hardly any energy. So here's some more tools. 
Uh, there's some rubber hazmat stuff, scuba helmet, hazmat suit, leggings, and static, static boots. Those are supposed to be rubber boots. There we go. I don't know what static boots even are. <laughs> So the rubber boots, uh, wearing that full suit will actually let you uh, climb into lava. I've had a friend, he lost a turtle, he needed to go in to get it because it ran out of fuel in a lava pool, and he threw that stuff on and jumped into the lava pool. It was pretty entertaining. Um, and then they've got the jackhammers. They basically are a super pick, but only for stone. Um, I don't know the difference because they seem to all just work crazy great. The rock cutter is like a silk touch, but it doesn't work very quickly. Tesla Staff is more of a PvP weapon. Never tested it yet. It's supposed to be really effective against um, energy-bearing armor. Laser, a lot of fun. Uh, this one I will demonstrate. There's a lot of different modes. Depending on what your mode switch key is in your controls, you hold that down and right-click, at preferably in a safe direction, because uh, if you just start shooting, you're going to break some holes and some stuff and set some trees on fire. Uh, so the long range is just long range. It uses a lot of power and it does a lot of damage to mobs. So the horizontal laser, it literally just does what it says and then it just goes like that. You really can't go very much lower, so you have to dig down. It has to be at least at uh, your, the f level of your feet. Um, if you go down, oh well, that's that, but you can go up one as well and then it just shoots in a straight line. It's really great for mining, doesn't do a lot of collateral damage. Uh, but you need to be careful of what you're shooting behind, but you can do some really cool mining stuff with that or clearing if you want to level out some terrain. This is your guy. L long range and stuff, it starts to dig in, and it just does not end up getting what you want done. Super heat is for, you say you see a piece of ore, uh, iron, and you want to smelt it, you just click it, and it'll smelt it. It'll also work on smooth stone. Instead of getting cobblestone, you get stone and hey there's iron and you get iron ingots instead of iron um, so then we'll do scatter I really don't want to do that here <laughs> you want to go out in the middle of nowhere for that <laughs> scatter is a huge mess not a lot of uses for it but I will go right about here and you can kind of see what it does really big mess really wide spray uh, not very uh, effective at doing anything but ruining terrain and and, uh, and the on scatter the lasers can actually go through objects before um, they actually start doing their damage so you may not see all the damage that it does but you know behind a wall you may have yeah. destroyed everything it's basically like shooting 50 long range lasers all at once in a pattern and uh, not terribly useful but I mean, if, if you really want to clear out a large area, explosive is much better, much more controllable. Um, you shoot it like that, it's basically just like a big piece of TNT, and uh, much more controllable. You can see what you're doing. Still do a lot of damage and make a big mess, but nowhere near what Scatter is doing. And then we've got Mining, which is just like a halfway to long range. It's uh, It doesn't shoot very far, but it's kind of quick, a little bit lower power. Um, Pretty good for literally mining, makes sense. Low focus is one block only. It will only shoot one block, nothing else. Um, decent range, it really good for like getting the stuff out of the sides of a quarry. Say you're sitting there with a jetpack and you want this ten pieces of iron here, you just pop, 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 and then just grab them and go. And then you don't have to sit there and whack at it while you're flying midair um, with a pick. And that's the laser rifle. Really nice. A uh, little bit expensive if you have Greg Tech enabled, but that's another thing we'll talk about. Uh, Greg Tech, a lot of people dislike Greg Tech. Um, it complicates a lot of patterns. It does slow your progression a little bit in the start, but in the long run, you will most definitely benefit from having Greg Tech enabled. He has given us many, many, many machines, which is basically just an expansion pack to industrial craft huge things that you can do with it literally making UU matter or iridium out of dirt <laughs> dirt <laughs> dirt <laughs> lots of dirt I have made a quarry just for dirt I have a terraformer set up to produce dirt 
and my quarry will loot the dirt so I can make things out of it. You can get a lot of power out of it, um, but we'll get to that at a later date. Uh, UU Matter and Iridium out of dirt. Thank you, Greg Tech. So, uh, <laughs> some jetpacks, uh, really cheap to make, electric jetpack. Uh, then here's all these battery packs and stuff and some tools. Uh, the wrench is for taking out the Industrial Craft 2 machines uh, so you don't break them. The hoe, it hoes. Uh, the electric tree tap, it taps trees. Mining drill, uh, kind of a nice thing to start with if you don't have the ultimate pack. The uh, the drills are a really good uh, replacement for a shovel and a pick. And you can actually enchant them. Almost You can enchant almost anything, I believe, with a book and an anvil. Which is ridiculous. Some of the stuff doesn't like to keep an enchant, like uh, the power armor body pieces, but the, the the power tool does. And the power tool, if you don't know, is basically everything, and everything, and everything. So, <laughs> uh, yet another reason why the ultimate pack is very nice. Uh, the solar helmet here is another thing from Industrial Craft. It's a really low level, uh, just a single solar panel, some wire, and some helmet pattern of iron and it makes a or you can just use an iron helmet that's cool um, a solar helmet doesn't charge a lot but it will keep your jetpack going a little bit longer than normal um, if you're still just new to the game and you haven't done a whole lot it's a good option uh, and an upgrade to that is the light helmet uh, basically if you're in a dark cave and you run out of torches or if you just haven't put down a torch lately it'll light up around you and it'll use some EU in the process but very cool helmet for an early on thing. Um, highly recommend it if you do not have access to the power suits. So, moving on to the next little bit. The Quantum Armor is kind of the go-to industrial craft endgame armor. Um, the boots are really cool. They give you kind of a super jump and uh, basically zero fall damage as long as they have energy. The legs are also very cool. They make you sprint very quickly, um, and that doesn't actually take any energy to do so. Both of them have great protection. Quantum Helmet lets you breathe underwater, removes debuffs from you, and feeds you if you have tin cans that are filled. Um, and also is an upgrade uh, as an upgrade to the Quantum Suit Helmet, but it does lose some of the beneficial things you can go to the Ultimate Solar Helmet, which is um, added by, I believe, the Gravity Suit Suite, or whatever it is, uh, in order to get the Ultimate Solar Helmet, because the pattern requires an Ultimate Hybrid Solar Panel. But uh, Ultimate Hybrid Solar pa uh, Ultimate Solar Helmet is a very nice helmet, it generates a ton of energy, your armor, armor is almost always full unless you're flying and boosting like crazy. The Quantum Body Suit Armor I don't think it has any special effects besides it's just a spanky armor piece. And EU storage. Yes. Oh, it works as a battery pack. Very good. Um, so, it, I mean, I believe it actually takes an ultimate lap pack in the pattern. No, it doesn't. Just a Lapatron, Lapatron crystal. Strange. I thought I needed that backpack for something. Oh, that's what it's for. The gravity suit. The gravity chest plate takes the ultimate lap pack. So... Backpacks are really cheap. They to keep your tools going. Um, another tool that I completely forgot about, the chainsaw. Um, chainsaw will end up replacing your sword and axe. It's pretty cool, pretty cheap. Um, and it just goes along with these tools. Um, of course, the upgraded versions, they just go faster. But I believe with the advanced diamond drill, it ends up taking more energy. To oh. Those are the tools, and the gravity chest plate. Before we're finished here, is uh, <laughs> the ultimate upgrade of the quantum suit body armor. He uh, holds 10 million EU, and it allows a person to fly. Let's see here. Gravitation engine on. There is a hotkey to turn that on and off. Once it's on, you just double jump as if you were in creative, and it is almost identical to the creative flying, except instead of stopping right away, you kind of float for a little while. And you'll also want to check in your controls for your boost key. The boost key makes you from going this fast while flying to this fast while flying. 
I believe it's probably about triple the speed if not faster and it makes you go very fast but it spends a lot more energy you can see my power dropping 90 percent 89 percent and if you had the ultimate solar helmet on it would go a lot slower but very very uh, good flying mode uh, you just crouch to go down space bar to go up things like that uh, makes you nearly invulnerable to have the, qu the full quantum suit and the gravity chest on uh, some people don't like it uh, if you are on the ultimate pack this gravity chest plate is very expensive a lot of very high-end components go into this thing it takes a long time just to craft I mean if a person were to create this in a creative world by crafting each component it literally takes at least a half an hour of just crafting to make this thing so very expensive very good you really never die anymore as long as you have the energy and you watch it, it you're just fine I mean, you can dump, jump into lava and be just fine for quite a while but uh, that's the gravity chest and uh, I personally don't use it anymore because with the ultimate pack we've been given this power armor machine muses modular power suits modular power suits yes that that sounds correct so the name of the mod is modular power suits and uh, you end up flying very fast and uh, it actually allows you to have your skin showing so you can have the armor show and there's two different skins of this which are free you have the, the base and then this is the citizen Joe and you can change the color of the armor to any color of the rainbow you just change it with the bars and you can also have it transparent so if you want your skin to show you can and that's what I love almost the most out of it but uh, it's got some sprint assist some step assist some really cool stuff that we'll get into it in another episode uh, so yeah next episode we'll be talking about the power system storage transformers and all the wiring and stuff like that and we'll start getting into some generation of power with generators and things you can do and uh, different wires and whatnot, and uh, we'll see you next episode. Bye. Bye.